Anthony's a fantastic baker and he makes the best cinnamon rolls on the planet. What's your secret, Anthony? There's a few secret ingredients, but I'm not gonna tell you just yet. We wanna know. Yeah. Keep watching. Welcome to Vincenzo's Plate with Anthony's Plate, my fantastic friend, great baker, who is going to change your life with these cinnamon rolls. Show mm. us how to make it, Anthony, please. Yep. Let's do it. To make our cinnamon rolls today, we're going to need to make three components. Firstly, we're going to make our beautiful brioche dough, then we're going to make the cinnamon filling, and then finally, we'll finish with the glaze. Here is how you make the dough. The first ingredient we're going to use in our brioche dough is some lovely buttermilk. Here is 110 grams of some buttermilk. We've got 100 grams of cultured butter. Then we're going to use two eggs. I'm going to use one whole egg, and then I'm going to use the yolk of another egg. Then we're going to add our dry ingredients. I've got 250 grams of plain flour, 10 grams of white sugar, six grams of sea salt, and four grams of dried yeast. The first step before we mix our dough, we're going to add in all of our wet ingredients. So let's start with the buttermilk. Now I'm going to add in the egg yolk, and now I'm going to add in the whole egg. Now we're going to add in all of our dry ingredients. All at once. All at once, the flour, the salt, the yeast, and the sugar. Now we need to use the hook attachment and pop this down. And we're going to mix it on about a medium speed until the dough is nicely developed and starting to come away from the sides of the bowl. So it could take up to 10 minutes. Different flours will take different amounts of time, but just be patient. Halfway through mixing, you can see that the dough has become quite loose and sticky. So what we're going to do at this stage, so I'm just going to stop the machine for a moment and just use a cake spatula to actually scrape down the sides of the bowl. We want to make sure that the dough is incorporated properly, okay? We'll just do this for a moment, just takes a second. And then we'll pop it back into the mixer and turn the machine back on so that it can continue to mix until it's fully developed. And what you're going to start to see over the next few minutes or so is the dough will start to unstick from the sides of the bowl and become much more strong. Now it's time to start adding our butter to the dough and continue mixing it until it's fully developed and it's fully coming away from the sides of the bowl. So while the mixer is running, just on a medium speed, we're going to start to add the butter piece by piece. Wow, beautiful dough. It is beautiful, very there's soft no way though. we can do this by hand. No, it's too soft the dough, too sticky. And there's a very high content of butter in there. So it needs to be done um, in the mixer, adding the butter slowly, bit by bit, while it's mixing. See how the dough is nice and strong now? It's fully developed, and it's pulling away from the sides of the bowl. It's nice and shiny. Just give it another 10 seconds, and then it's going to be ready to put away. There we are. Oh yeah, very nice. Shiny, smooth. Okay, now that our dough is fully mixed, it's time to take it out. We're going to carefully handle it, okay? Remember the dough is very supple and very delicate. So I just gently fold it over my hands like this to create a little bit of a tight skin and then we're going to put it away into a container so we're going to place this in the fridge overnight so it's going to ferment and we'll see you tomorrow it's time to make our filling for the cinnamon rolls what we have in the bowl is four tablespoons of brown sugar two tablespoons of white sugar one quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt, 
one and a half tablespoons of ground cinnamon. Now we're going to add just one eighth of a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg, just a small amount because it's a very strong flavor. Now we just need to simply stir the ingredients together. Just getting it all nice and evenly mixed through because in a moment we're going to spread this dry, spicy, sugary mixture over our butter. It's like making a cheesecake. Yeah. Here we are, it's time to roll our dough out. It's really important at this stage now that we work with the dough nice and quickly because it's cold from the butter that's been in the fridge, but the more that we play around with it and the more it stays out of the fridge, it's gonna get more soft and soft and a bit more difficult to work with. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dust quite generously some flour on the bench, okay? And I'm going to carefully tip the dough out. What I'm trying to do here is no, it's to like be. A butter. It is. It's like a block of butter. What I'm trying to do is to be nice and gentle with the dough. I don't want to knead it at this stage or scrunch it or fold it. Okay. I just want it to be generously floured underneath and on top as well. Okay. With our hands, we can just give it a bit of a flat press on the dough to flatten it a little bit. And we can turn it, make sure it's covered in all edges with the flour. And now I'm going to get my rolling pin. Vincenzo, be a good boy, otherwise. Now I'm going to slowly start to roll it with nice even pressure, back and forth, back and forth. And you know when we roll, we never turn the rolling pin. We always turn the dough. So back and forth, nice and straight, and we stop, and then we turn the dough. We come back, back and forth, a little bit more. We stop, we turn the dough, and we roll it back and forth once again. We're going to continue this action until we've reached 30 centimeters on each side. We want a nice, perfect square. So I'm just going to double check that I've got the right width, and I do. So I'm rolling my dough out to 30 centimeters each way because my square cake tin is 20 centimeters wide, and that's going to ensure that the dough fills up completely all the way from one side of the tin to the other. Once our dough is fully developed, then we can start to add in our beautiful cultured unsalted butter. It's very important this butter is nice and soft at room temperature. See how it's nice and malleable? It's very important, otherwise it won't incorporate properly into the dough. I want to evenly place the butter all over my dough, so I'm just putting some bits, just some knobs of butter on one side. I put the butter onto the dough this way so that when I go to smear all over, it spreads nice and evenly. Okay, now we can spread this butter nice and evenly. You can see I'm using an offset spatula, so it's nice and gentle on the dough. We need to make sure that we get the butter all the way to the edge, all the way to the edge. And this butter is going to mix with our sugar and spices and create the most delicious filling for our cinnamon rolls. Make sure you don't miss any spots. Fantastic. Now we can spread this beautiful spicy sugary mixture all over our buttered brioche dough. So I'm going to start to spread it over with my spoon Mmm, the flavor, the smell, wow. It smells beautiful. Wow. Make sure you wow. go all the way to the edge and you don't miss any spots. Okay, we're going to spread this very gently with our hands all the way to the edge. Wow, oh, such an artisan. Mmm. This looks mm. and smells delicious. Yeah. I wish you were in this kitchen. <laughs> what do we do if it's Christmas time or Easter time? Yeah, you can definitely make this um, very festive and okay. adapt the recipe. So the filling, maybe you could add some ground cloves to give okay. it that beautiful spicy nice. Christmassy feel. Some fresh orange zest would go nicely. Can I put Nutella? Oh, you can put Nutella, yeah. you can put anything you want. Yes, the Christmas <laughs> breakfast is going to be Nutella rolls. Fantastic. <laughs> now we need to roll up our scroll. And remember guys, the tighter the roll, the better the scroll. We're going to start here at the top and roll forwards. Just take a little bit and start to roll it over. Remember the dough is very delicate, okay? Once you've got that first fold, we can start to roll it bit by bit, bit by bit. It's like meditation. 
keep the edges in. Okay, every time you get to the side, just tap it in on either side. Good job. Thanks, Ren. There we are. Yay, hello. So guys, I can feel that the dough is becoming quite soft because we've been handling it quite a bit and it's quite warm here today. So what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this all the time, but if your dough is starting to get a bit soft, you can pop it onto a tray and stick it into the fridge just for 10, 15, 20 minutes so that the butter can begin to solidify a little bit more again and it'll be much easier and clean to cut in a moment. Now it's time to pop our log onto the bench so that we can cut it into our scrolls. Here's our beautiful log. Now what I've got is I've got a serrated knife which I can use to gently cut our log into nine equal pieces. The other option is you can also use a string and pull it through. You just wanna be nice and gentle. So to cut it into nine equal pieces, the best way to do it is to first imagine that your log is cut into three. So I'm just going to make some marks here and then I'm going to cut each third into three again. I love that sound. It's beautiful. Don't want to tear the dough. There it is. Have a look at this. Ooh, hello babies. Hello. <laughs> now that we cut our log into the pieces, it's just like a big log of sushi. We need to pick them up and invert them so that we show this beautiful presentation on the top. Now we want to prepare our tin. So what I've done is I've just cut two pieces of baking paper, which is exactly the width from side to side of our tin. So I can put one this way and one this way. And that's going to make sure that our dough doesn't stick. Okay, we're going to place these up in the tin side by side, leaving a little bit of a gap in between each one. Looks beautiful. So it is very important to the space. Is that because they're growing? Yeah, they're going to proof up a little bit and eventually when they do bake, they're actually going to grow into each other. Okay. So we want to give them a little bit of room to breathe. And then you're going to see once this is proofed and then once it's baked, it's going to be full of scroll. Okay, it's time to cover these completely with plastic wrap and create a really humid environment so that they can proof up nicely at room temperature for the next hour before we go into the oven to bake. If it's nice and warm and humid inside the cake tin, then it's going to allow our scrolls to proof up really nicely. They're not going to dry out. So that's why I cover it completely all the way around. So it's been about one hour and our scrolls have proofed up nicely. They've grown a little bit in size. Have a look. Fantastic. Now it's time to bake our cinnamon rolls. I've got the oven preheated at 170 degrees Celsius, fan force. What we're going to do with our tin is I'm going to now cover it with some foil. And the reason why we do this is because we want to create a nice steamy environment inside of the cake tin. Then after 20 minutes, we'll take the foil off and we'll bake for a further 10 minutes until they're beautifully brown and ready for that yummy glaze. So it's been 20 minutes in the oven with the foil on. Let's remove the foil and have a look how we're going. Oh. oh, look at that. So you can see they're beautiful and expanded. Anthony, I love the smell. Isn't it beautiful? Mm. 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 I mean, I want to eat them right now. So Not let's yet. put them in the oven. Okay. 10 more minutes and let's make the glaze. Come on, Anthony. Let's do it. Let's make the glaze. Now we need to make the vanilla glaze that's going to go on top of our yummy scrolls. So what I have here is 125 grams of pure icing sugar. I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of sea salt. I'm going to add to that a nice big tablespoon of vanilla bean paste. So we get that beautiful vanilla flavor. And lastly, two tablespoons of buttermilk. We simply need to stir these ingredients together until smooth. It's like a custard. Yeah. This is the moment we have been waiting for. Look at that. The stunning cinnamon oh, rolls. They smell beautiful. You smell that? 
it's time for the glaze. Let's do it. Okay, now we're going to put on our vanilla glaze while these are still piping hot, so it's going to melt over and drizzle just beautifully. You ready for this? Let's yeah. Have a and just watch it. Look how it slowly drizzles over. Yes. We'll do this one. Yes. Wow. And I love that you can see the little specks of the black vanilla beans in the glaze. Looks so beautiful. Oh. Look at this. Oh. And spread that all over so it's completely covered. Spread the love. Spread the love. Hmm. Yum, 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 yum. You know, Vincenzo, you have to eat this while they're still warm. Oh, 100%. Oh, it's so beautiful. 100%. Oh, look how soft. Mm. Are you proud? Oh, it looks so good. Can't wait to try it. Anthony, you know what it is? What is it? The best time of? The day. The day and the video. Come on, mm. let's have it. Let's try it. That would be, oh my God, so moist, so soft. Mm. The flavors, you know. Cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. Mm. 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 You can tell from the video how moist it is. It's so soft. The perfect amount of sugar. Mm. Mm. How many can you eat? Mm. We can do four each. Four each? Mm. Okay. Mm. Is this a breakfast thing or mm. all day long? All day, any time. Mm. Dessert, breakfast, wow. midnight snack. Do you think I can make this one savory? Yeah, you can make it savory. Maybe put some pesto inside, mm. some cheese mm. maybe. No, you're talking. That would be nice, mm. yeah. Delicious. Mm. I can't wait to try my version of Nutella. What are you going to put inside? Hmm? What flavors are you going to put inside? Please write a big comment <coughs> for Anthony. He's sharing all these amazing recipes with you. Mm. Come on, you can open a bakery tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Mm -hmm. And see you in the next video recipe with Anthony. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe. No. Thank you and buon appetito. Mm. Mm. Yum yum. Mm. Yum yum. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's unbelievable. It's fucking unbelievable. You happy? This is amazing.